Bismillahirrahmanirrahim ve bihi nasta'in. Assalamu alaikum everybody. In a continuation of our last presentation about the sympatholytics, today we'll talk about alpha adrenergic receptor blockers. So, in revision, what we have said before, we have classified adrenergic receptors into two major types, into alpha adrenergic receptor and beta adrenergic receptor. We subclassify the alpha receptor into two major subtypes, alpha 1 and alpha 2, and the beta adrenergic receptor, we subclassify them into beta 1 and beta 2. We said that alpha 1 are always excitatory, except in the intestine, where they are inhibitory, while alpha 2 are always inhibitory. So, today we will speak about drugs that block the alpha receptor, alpha receptor antagonist. So, the main goal of this presentation is to know what are the actions and what are the clinical indications of alpha adrenergic receptor blockers? Okay, so f very first we have to know what are the classes of ad alpha adrenergic receptor blockers. Generally, they are subclassified alpha adrenergic receptor uh, receptor blockers. They are subclassified according to their selectivity into two major groups: the non-selective alpha adrenergic receptor blocker and badanan selective we mean that they can block both types of adrenergic receptor they block alpha 1 and they block alpha 2 receptor the other class are the selective alpha adrenergic receptor blockers and by this we mean either they block the alpha 1 receptor or they block alpha 2 receptor. Our main presentation will be about the non-selective and selective alpha 1 blockers because the selective alpha 2 blockers they are sympathomimetics. Okay? Non-selective alpha adrenergic receptor blocker they block both receptors that are subclassified into two main groups. One group is known as the irreversible irreversible antagonist or blockers irreversible as we have explained before several times that means once the receptor is occupied by the antagonist the antagonist will never leave the receptor this irreversible antagonist usually they decrease the efficacy of the agonist most famous example in this case is phenoxybenzamine. This is the only, there are many other, but this which has a clinical application, phenoxybenzamine. Therefore, phenoxybenzamine has irreversible non-selective alpha blockers. It blocks alpha 1 and alpha 2 irreversibly. The second are the reversible alpha blocker which are the competitive reversible or competitive alpha receptor antagonist and reversible we know or competitive they compete with the agonist on adrenergic receptors and therefore their action can be reversed by increasing the concentration of the agonist and the most famous example which we are will talk about is phentolamine. This is the most famous example. And there is another example, tolazoline, with very limited clinical use. Okay? Now, these are the first group, which are the non-selective alpha antagonists. The other group, which are selective alpha antagonists, Includes alpha 1 blockers, 
They are subclassified as well into two major groups alpha 1a and alpha 1b. Alpha 1a, example of alpha 1a tamsulucine. This is the prototype of alpha 1a and there are other examples we'll talk about them in minutes the alpha 1b is the proto prototype is brazucine most famous brazucine and its congress we'll talk about them in a minute okay we'll talk now about the each group so first we'll talk about the non-selective alpha blockers and we will start with irreversible alpha blockers the most famous example in this case we have said is phenoxybenzamine. 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 This drug will block both, we said, alpha 1 receptor and it will block as well alpha 2 receptor. So, what will happen if it blocks alpha 1 receptor on blood vessels? it will decrease the peripheral resistance and as well this will result in decrease in blood pressure this is the first effect they produce a decrease in blood pressure okay this decrease in blood pressure will stimulate the baroreceptor flex and will result in reflex tachycardia tachycardia because as we have said before several times, any decrease in blood pressure, when it is severe, it will stimulate the baroreceptor reflex, and baroreceptor reflex will be will result in activation of sympathetic activity in the heart, and this will result in reflex tachycardia. So this is very common action of these drugs: reduce decrease in blood pressure, plus reflex tachycardia. Okay, now. By blocking the alpha-2 receptor, as we know, alpha-2 receptors are presynaptic. They are present on the adrenergic nerve terminal, as we have said before. So, alpha-2, we said they are inhibitory, i.e. they inhibit the formation of the cyclic MB, and therefore they will decrease the intracellular calcium. If they are inhibitory presynaptic mana, they should decrease release. This is the main function of alpha-2. The main function of alpha-2 receptor is to regulate release of noradrenaline. That's why they are known as autoreceptors. Autoreceptors. Therefore, alpha receptors are presynaptic and they are inhibitory in nature. They inhibit the release of noradrenaline and that's why they are known autoreceptor. Therefore, if you, we block alpha 2 receptors, blocking in alpha 2 receptors means increase noradrenaline release because there will be no inhibitor of noradrenaline release. If this happens in the heart, what will happen? Heart muscle. Tachycardia. Tachycardia. Okay. Therefore, phenoxybenzamine will produce tachycardia by two mechanisms. The first is the reflex mechanism through the baroreceptor effect, and second is the direct effect by blocking alpha-2 presynaptic alpha-2 receptors. Okay. So phenoxybenzamine will produce decrease in blood pressure. plus severe tachycardia okay so phenoxybenzamine we said it is irreversible irreversible means that its action is of long duration very long duration because once the adrenergic receptors are blocked by phenoxybenzamine that's the end of those receptor till a new receptor are synthesized okay till the new receptors are formed therefore phenoxybenzamine is only kept for 
very serious condition like what so phenoxybenzamine in this case as we have said will produce severe decrease in blood pressure plus severe tachycardia that's why phenoxybenzamine is only kept for serious conditions like for example pheochromocytoma pheochromocytoma which is the tumor of the adrenal gland tumor of the adrenal gland will result in a huge increase of adrenaline and noradrenaline from the adrenal gland this of course will produce severe increase in blood pressure plus tachycardia in this case usually pheochromocytoma it is surgically removed before surgery before any surgery of the tumor they have to reduce blood pressure they have to reduce the high blood pressure how do you do that through phenoxybenzamine so they give phenoxybenzamine before surgery to decrease blood pressure usually phenoxybenzamine is given with beta blocker like proboranolol and we'll explain later when we talk about beta blockers why they give both drugs because propranolol will block the beta 1 effect on the heart and phenoxybenzamine will block the alpha 1 effect on blood vessels okay so this is the first important clinical use of phenoxybenzamine the second use of phenoxybenzamine it is used in carcinoid tumor of the GIT and it's used in carcinoid tumor is because it can block 5-HT receptors they have found that phenoxybenzamine besides blocking adrenergic receptor it can block the 5-HT receptor in carcinoid tumor usually there is a severe production or increased production of 5-HT from the cancer cells of the GIT okay so this is the second use of phenoxybenzamine so irreversible alpha blockers we have only one example phenoxybenzamine which blocks alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors and this will result in decrease of blood pressure plus severe tachycardia this severe tachycardia is dual mechanism due to baroreceptor reflex and due to direct effect of blocking alpha 2 receptors presynaptically that that's why phenoxybenzamine is only used in a serious condition like the pheochromocytoma which is the tumor of the adrenal gland which will result in a huge amounts of adrenaline and noradrenaline and it is used in carcinoid tumor because it can block 5-HT receptor as well okay so this is the first group of alpha blockers which are the irreversible alpha blockers second group the, are the reversible reversible alpha blockers reversible alpha blocker they will act as a competitive competitive antagonist competitive antagonist at alpha adrenergic receptor and as we have explained several times competitive that means they compete with acetyl or with noradrenaline on the adrenergic alpha adrenergic receptors maybe the most famous example is phentolamine 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 as we have said it is non-selective it can block alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors competitively competitively it is 
yeah how it differs from phenoxybenzene phenoxybenzene is irreversible irreversible that means we can never uh, remove them from the receptor once they occupy the receptors but phentolamine it is reversible competitive antagonism that means we can remove phentolamine from the receptor if we increase the concentration of adrenaline or noradrenaline okay phentolamine by blocking alpha 1 receptor exactly the same like phenoxybenzamine will decrease the blood pressure and by blocking the alpha 2 receptors it can produce tachycardia tachycardia therefore the same thing decrease the blood pressure will simulate the paroreceptor reflex it can produce tachycardia therefore Phentolamine can produce decrease of blood pressure plus tachycardia. Plus tachycardia. Uh, this is why phentolamine is not preferred to decrease of blood pressure. We can, can reduce tachycardia and this tachycardia will increase the oxygen demand or by the heart. And this increase of oxygen dem demand by the heart is dangerous, especially when there is cardiac ischemia so when phentolamine it is used it is used only in some cases to decrease the blood pressure during surgery so indication is to decrease some cases not first choice it is second choice to decrease blood pressure during surgery sometimes during surgery blood pressure will shoot up will it be increased they have to decrease the blood pressure to decrease the bleeding. In this case, they use phentolamine as second choice. Second, because there are better choices like uh, sodium nitroprusside. Sodium nitroprusside is the first choice. Like sometimes sodium nitroprusside either is not available or because of its toxicity when it is used. Uh, for a long period of time so in this case if phentolamine is available it can be used maybe the most important use of phentolamine it is used after accidental local infiltration of noradrenaline accidental local infiltration Of noradrenaline or adrenaline as we in this case if it is accidentally uh, injected into a tissue like in cases of local anesthesia in this case noradrenaline will be or adrenaline will produce severe vasoconstriction and this severe vasoconstriction will result in severe local ischemia because the tissue will receive no blood because there's a severe blood uh, vasoconstriction and this severe local ischemia will result in necrosis the tissue will die the tissue will die this is very serious condition so in this case local infiltration with phentolamine will help in the local infiltration good in the same side infiltration local infiltration of phentolamine okay so these are the main uses of phentolamine it is used in case of uh, hypertension during surgery if we have no no, no first choice like sodium nitroprusside and it is used infiltration uh, local infiltration in cases of necrosis due to noradrenaline okay so these are the non-selective alpha antagonists which can be either the irreversible like phenoxybenzamine or the reversible like phentolamine okay now we'll talk about the selective alpha blockers Selective alpha blockers, and we have said that selective alpha blockers they can block selectively 
alpha 1 adrenergic receptors or alpha 2. We said that blocking the alpha 2 is not sympatolytic, they are sympatomimetics. They increase the sympathetic activity. Okay, so we'll talk about alpha 1 blocker. Alpha 1 blocker. The alpha 1, as we have said, they are subclassified into two major classes alpha 1 B receptors, which are most abundant in blood vessels, and alpha 1 A, which are most abundant in the urinary system smooth muscles of the urinary system okay so we'll talk first about alpha 1 b blockers alpha 1 b blockers and there are many examples very famous examples like brazosine this is the very first discovered and introduced into medicine brazosine and then this was followed by tirazosine many examples and oxazucine, oxazucine. So what's the difference between these two, these three groups? The first discovered was brazucine. It was of short duration of action, and usually it is exposed to first pass effect, as we have said before. Brazucine, it has very short duration of action, not very short, short duration of action, shorter than the other drugs, and it is exposed to first pass effect. That's why they introduced tirazosine and oxazosine, which have a longer T half, they will stay in the body for a longer period of time. A plus and num, they can be taken only once daily, once daily. Okay, so these are the alpha 1 beta receptor antagonist most famous so these drugs usually they block all alpha 1 adrenergic receptors so we expect that they will decrease to produce many actions including blood vessel they decrease blood vessels blood pressure they decrease they produce vasodilatation therefore they do decrease blood pressure they might produce slight tachycardia due to the reflex mechanism. Not severe, slight. And they might produce postural hypotension. Okay, this is a relation to the cardiovascular system. So by blocking the alpha one, beta receptors which are present on blood vessels on blood vessels they will decrease the blood pressure because they will decrease the peripheral resistance this will result in slight tachycardia not severe because of flex mechanism and the decrease in peripheral resistance will result in postural hypotension when the person stands up he might get dizzy okay dizziness because the blood will be pulled in the periphery Okay, now beside that, they can produce failure of ejaculation, as we had said before, and the failure of ejaculation because of the alpha effect, as we said that ejaculation is alpha one dependent. If we block the alpha one receptors, in this case, ejaculation in male will be failed. Okay plus other action that we have described before but generally these effects are tolerable and usually the compliance to these drugs is okay to the patient and usually they are taken for the treatment of hypertension so they are indicated as first line in the treatment of hypertension Okay, as we will discuss inshallah in details when we talk about treatment of hypertension. Okay, maybe the most serious side effects of these drugs that they produce severe postural hypertension, especially after the first dose. 
first dose. That's why this is known as first dose phenomena. Phenomena. Okay. Therefore, these drugs they might produce severe postural hypotension, especially after the first dose. This is known as first dose phenomena. That's why usually they recommend that the first dose should be taken at night before going to sleep. First dose should be taken at night before going to sleep. Okay. So this is the first group, which are the alpha one B blockers, which can block adrenergic receptors on the blood vessels, decreasing the blood pressure, producing slight tachycardia due to reflex mechanism, and they can produce postural hypotension. And alpha-1 beta receptors are present in many places, including ejaculatory ducts in the male, and this can lead to failure of ejaculation, besides the other effects that we have described before. These drugs they are generally indicated in treatment of hypertension. Okay, so this is the first group, alpha-1 B blockers. The second group are alpha-1 A blockers, and this includes many examples like tamsulosine, alpha-zosine, Tamsulosine is the prototype, alphozosine, and silodosine. Silodosine. Okay. This drug usually they are used in prostatic hypertrophy. benign prostatic hypertrophy. In this case, usually, prostatic hypertrophy, there is difficulty in urination. Urination is difficult, and as well, increase the frequency of urination. So these drugs, what they do, they relax urethral sphincter, produce relaxation of urethral sphincter making urination easier okay voiding will become easier, easy urination, okay? If the these drugs, they relax the urethral sphincter, this will make uh, urination easy. However, this indication is accompanied by a lot of side effects because they block the alpha-1 receptor at the ejaculatory ducts, as we have said, and they can produce failure of ejaculation. Besides other effects, and as well, they can produce impotence and decrease in libido, which is usually is troublesome, especially in male. So in this case, there are better choices nowadays, better choices for treatment of prostatic hypertrophy, which are the phosphodiesterase inhibitor enzyme inhibitor type 1. Type 5, sorry. Phosphodiesterase enzyme type 5 inhibitors, and including the most famous examples, sidenafil and tadalafil. Tadalafil and sildenafil. Marufat, Ramayl, Viagra, and Okay, better choices nowadays for treatment of prostatic hypertrophy is tadalafil and sildenafil because these drugs, besides in the they 
produce relaxation of the urethral sphincter they improve erection and they will improve uh, sexual activity okay so these are generally alpha receptor antagonists so in summary we can say that the first we talked about uh, is phenoxybenzamine which is irreversible non-selective alpha blocker with the clinic application in few chromocytoma and carcinoid tumor and few chromocytoma we talked as well about fentolamine which is a competitive non-selective alpha blocker with the clinical application as second choice in hypertension during surgery and in local ischemia due to sympathomimetics we talked about brazosine as a selective alpha 1b blocker which is used for treatment of hypertension and we talked as well as tamsulosine and its congress which is a selective alpha 1a blocker and it is used for treatment of prostatic hypertrophy so this is about uh, alpha blockers next and our next presentation inshallah will talk about the pharmacological action and the clinical application of beta adrenergic receptor blocker i would like to thank you very much for your attention don't forget to distribute among your colleagues and friends i hope that you stay in peace and harmony assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah